In today's video, how many calories do you burn lifting weights? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, I am going to tell you exactly how many calories you burn when you're working out, when you're lifting weights, when you're doing that old muscle building resistance training, right? We're going to talk about specifically how we know this number. And it all comes from my friends at Mass. So my friends, Greg Knuckles, Eric Helms, and Mike Zordos, have actually been putting mass together for two years now. So if you don't know what mass is, well, I've talked about it basically monthly since it came out. They give me a free subscription to their publication and they allow me to talk about it. And it's great because I get to share with you guys just what it is that I use to continue my education. So mass is the monthly application in strength sport. And it's basically a research review of research that is kind of specific to what I do. It has to do with things like body composition, strength, performance, and it takes and looks at the research that's out there that's relevant to what I'm interested in, what you're interested in, and they do a review of the study and they break down what they think was good, what they think was bad, what could improve, what could we learn from it. And this month I was very excited when I opened up the issue and I saw the first article by Greg Knuckles was about how many calories you burn during a workout because that is a question long as I've been training I've kind of always wondered and my first thought when I first started working out was hey I'm gonna work out I'm gonna go train some muscles and afterwards I need to eat a huge meal because I just destroyed myself turns out that might not be the case so let's talk about this study as a whole as the study design went and I'll just give you the basics but if you want to know more if you want specifics if you want two years of information basically that I've been reading well I got a link in my description box where you can click on it and you can purchase mass it's a monthly subscription and I got to tell you I read through it front to end every month it's fantastic so take a look at that if you want more specific details but I'm gonna give you guys a rundown on this this article about how many calories we burn while we work out or while we're training or we're doing some resistance training. And they took 52 subjects. And what I really liked about that was almost half of them were women. So 27 men and 25 women. A lot of these studies are kind of gender specific. They're aimed at just how much muscle men can put on, right? But this was cool because we looked at women. And they did three meetings with these individuals. So what they did was they met with them the first time and they got a VO2 max test. And anybody that's done a VO2 max test is, basically they put you in a breathing apparatus, they, they measure gas exchange, and then they put you through a workout to kind of find out what your maximum output is, okay? Then, a few days later, after they rested and recovered, they brought them back in, and they did a three to five rep max test on several lifts so that they could design their training program. So after they did that, a few days later, now they did their workouts, and they put them through a workout which would have been very similar to the workout that most of us do in the gym. They did two to three sets per exercise in the eight rep range, okay? So 70% of their one rep max. So they put everybody through a workout and they learned quite a few things. So what did they find? How many calories did they burn? Well, they basically found that for a lower volume workout, the average was 75 to 100 calories burned for that session. For a higher volume workout, it was 150 to 300 calories. Also for good measure, they measured excess post-exercise oxygen consumption or EPOC, which is something a lot of people talk about when they're talking about uh, bodybuilding or lifting weights, that it's not just what you burn in the gym, it's what you burn after, okay? Well, they basically found that to be kind of inconsequential at basically seven calories. So there wasn't a whole lot of EPOC going on in this workout session. Now. Obviously, the more intense your training is, there might be a little bit more of that. But I think the surprising thing for me was just how low the calories burned during the session was. A typical person doing cardio, like jogging, would burn between 10 and 20 calories a minute. This was about two to three calories per minute. So that tells me, if you're looking at something purely from the perspective of burning calories, cardio is far superior. And let's talk about a few things that the study doesn't really mention. First, let's talk about what the observer effect is. That is basically the idea that when we monitor or observe a phenomenon, it therefore changes that phenomenon because it's being observed. So if you can imagine going into the gym and lifting weights with a mask on. So to get indirect calorimetry, they put them in a mask. Basically, they had to work out in a mask, which allowed them to figure out what the gas exchange was, 
how many calories they were burning during the session. So if we're talking about observing, that seems pretty intense. It's not someone just in the gym watching you. They were literally had a mask on them while people were watching them. And if you've ever, if you've ever been in the gym and felt people watching you, well, sometimes that can be motivation. You can train a little bit harder. But then at the same time, when you have a piece of medical equipment on your face, it might have, might have changed things. However, I can, it's, think it's safe to say it wouldn't have changed things a whole lot, okay? Because we're not talking about a huge number here. We're not talking about thousands of calories being burned. We're talking about tens of calories, okay? A few hundred calories potentially being burned. So it's not like there's gonna be a huge change just because these people are being observed. And typically when people are observed during a training protocol like this, they train a little bit harder than they would if they were not being observed. So I think it's probably safe to say that there wasn't much interference as far as calorie burn goes. What's most valuable to me here is that we can take away from this the fact that working out with weights, resistance training, does not have much of a short-term effect on our bodies. There's not much acute change, okay? The difference in calorie burning, okay, from being sedentary to working out is about the same as if you went for a walk, okay? There is not much immediate impact on your body other than the fact that we get to do something very fun, and that is muscle hypertrophy, okay? So the impact of a of workout short term is not big, but over time, when we add lean body mass and we are able to have, walk around with a bit more muscle, we can certainly change the way we look and change the way we feel. Just because we're not taking a, um, a lot more calories does not mean it is not important to work out, okay? There are some serious benefits to working out that go far beyond how many calories you burn. In fact, I don't use working out as a measure of calorie burning, okay? As someone that coaches people, I do not put people on a weightlifting program that just wanna lose weight, okay? Weightlifting changes your body composition, okay? More muscle makes us operate a little bit differently. In fact, it's one of the only ways that we can effectively change our metabolism is by putting on muscle. So, when we're talking about just burning calories, working out might not be the best thing for you, okay? Sure, it's a good way to get in the gym, get some work in, but you're clearly not doing that much work as far as calorie burning is concerned. So I would suggest using a blend. In fact, years ago when I was just getting into bodybuilding and just trying to clang and bang and build some weights, you know what I was doing? I was getting fat at the same time because I would associate like, man, I just had a good workout. I need to go, you know, have my protein shake and I need to go have some, uh, you know, a, a huge serving of protein and some carbs. I need to really restore my glycogen and do all these things. Well, now we know that's not the case. And I find it much more effective to be much more moderate with my calorie increases, either when I'm adding calories while I'm working out or restricting calories when I'm dieting. I find that it's much more effective to be a lot less crazy with those changes, okay? So guys, when you're talking about working out and you're trying to put on muscle, understand that putting on muscle, it's a very slow process and it's very difficult. Putting on fat is a very quick process and it's very easy. So you have to be patient with this process. Don't, just because you start a workout routine, consider adding lots of calories. In fact, what we see here is you might not even need as much as 100 calories a day extra when you start the weightlifting process, okay? Over time, that might change. And the study also showed, and Greg actually discussed this, that someone who is an advanced lifter who's very strong, well, they might be burning upwards of 500 calories a session, just directly in that session. Also, if you're getting into some high rep drop sets and high intensity techniques, then you're gonna get into a bit of really deep breathing. And you know what I'm talking about when we're talking about heavy compound movements for the lower body, where you literally run out of breath before you run out of strength, then we're probably getting to a place where now we're starting to blend the benefits of burning some more calories in the gym session. But for those of us that just go in the gym, have a nice lift and recover, there's not going to be a huge need on caloric demands, okay? Hopefully this video helped you guys, but more importantly, go check out the link below, check out Mass, and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. And if you have follow-up questions, let me know. And also guys, thank you for the 100K. Uh, you know, just means the world to me that you guys are clicking that subscribe button, leaving me comments, and I really appreciate it. Anyway, guys, I'll talk to you tomorrow.